Man, I wish there was an easy mode. No, you don't, citizen! What? Easy modes are actually terrible additions and should never be added to a game. How, how did you get in my house? Don't worry, I'll explain everything. To the chair! What? So what did I mean when I said easy modes are terrible additions? Well, let's break it down. Games are art and are designed to fill you with emotions such as happiness, sadness, or fear. No, not again. Everything in a game is designed specifically with an emotion in mind. Celeste is all about overcoming depression and how hard it is. So the gameplay is brutally hard to match the emotional story so the player knows the struggle the character is going through. As she metaphorically falls back down into depression, she literally falls down the mountain that you just climbed. Which makes the character feel terrible because she's depressed and makes you feel terrible because you just lost all that progress. It's a parallel that shows how video games work as art. Celeste isn't the only game to do this and it's actually done quite well by many others. Undertale was founded on this idea with gameplay and story that manages to match perfectly. So when you're a worse person and kill more people, the game gets harder and makes you as a player feel more miserable. And on the flip side, if you're nicer to people, you're given more gameplay variety and enjoyable dialogue, making you feel happier. Dark Souls is even built off this, having its emotional story built into the idea of overcoming challenges. If the challenges aren't challenging, you've kind of ruined the entire emotional journey the game wants to take you on. Now Dark Souls is really the game that started this whole topic of discussion, with players saying, get good, as a common response. But that's not a great response because, I tried, okay, please! Many people say that easy modes should just be a given because they're just so easy to add. You can just toss one in without thinking about it and it'll just make the game better. Kinda like adding cheese to any food, it just gets better. However, easy modes aren't as easy to add as you may believe and require far more thought. The most basic kind of easy mode is simply adjusting the stats of the game, like turning enemy health down or player damage up. However, this still needs to be play tested vigorously to make sure that it still stays balanced since making you too strong can kind of ruin the whole thing. However, lots of games require more specific changes. Like in Cuphead, they remove phases of the bosses to make them easier. This is easy in games like Cuphead where the boss has distinct phases, but what if they don't? Will You Snail has every level remade four times for four different difficulties. Sometimes the changes are just stats, like how fast spikes spawn, but other times ground and hazard placements are altered, which can take quite a lot more time. If Dark Souls were to have an easy mode, you'd have to reanimate all the bosses in order to make them attack slower, something that can take quite a lot of time to do. You'd also need to restructure some of the game's landscapes so that you have more space or cover. They'd have to spend quite a while reworking the entire game to make it easier. It's not a simple fix, like... Done. Besides, easy modes may not be great for players either because we're required to select how hard we want the game before we've even played it. It's like asking a random person what kind of spice a gourmet dish needs. Needs cheese. An interesting game to bring up about this topic is Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn, a game that basically ruined its entire perception because of an issue with difficulty modes. You see, in Japan, the game was given three modes, Normal, Hard, and Expert. However, when translated, they decided to use the more common, Easy, Normal, and Hard. This meant that Normal Mode was actually Hard Mode, and thus, most players who were inexperienced with the game couldn't progress, and thus the game was seen as way too hard, when in reality, it wasn't. People just weren't choosing the correct difficulty since everyone just wanted to play on Normal. Because if there's one thing gamers are known for, it's for being not abnormal. Actually, I wonder how hard this game actually was. I should try it out. Amazon... Never mind. Point is, even if you're adding an easy mode to make your game more accessible for all skill levels, it probably won't work, meaning you're just wasting your time. Many easier options also kinda suck. A lot of these modes don't just make the game easier, but... Boring. Mario 3D Land has an invincibility leap that shows up if you die too much, and getting it allows you to breeze over all the challenges in the entire level, both the enemies and the platforming. It doesn't help you get through the challenge, it just makes them not challenges. It's a terrible easy option. I mean, it's better than Donkey Kong Country Returns because that level literally just play itself. Which sucks. Minecraft has a more open easy mode system, with many things you could adjust, like whether fire spreads, whether you drop items when you die, if mobs spawn, or even if they can break blocks. Many people claim they want easy modes just to make the game easier, but often people just want an easy mode to make it more accessible for those who can't play the game as well due to some kind of disability. Accessibility is a great thing in games, and every game should at least attempt to make the game as accessible as possible, but the solution to making the game accessible isn't easy mode. Adding easy modes to make the games more accessible for those with disabilities is like making cars unmovable so that blind people can drive. It's not a fix. Games have already found great solutions to this, like allowing players to choose the colors of specific important information. Some have even more advanced options, like grounded, allowing you to edit how spiders look in order to make them look less like spiders, so those with arachnophobia can still play the game. Wish we could do that in real life. Oh no, oh no, oh, stop, stop. <laughs> 
Microsoft even designed an entire controller specifically for those who were unable to use the original one. This is a fix for accessibility, not easy modes. But who cares? Even though people probably won't choose it, it doesn't actually fix the problem that we wanted to fix, it takes more time to make than we actually first expected, and it could even ruin many of the emotional events in the game. Even with all that, still, why not? What is a better solution? What can we do to allow all players with all skill levels to play our game and everyone having a fun time and receiving challenges that they all find challenging and satisfying? Well, I'm glad you asked. Mario has had a solution for this for many years, and people have apparently just not been paying attention. Mario Odyssey is designed perfectly for both new and old players. Most of the game's challenges are completely optional, meaning if they're too hard, you can just skip them. And even in the easier challenges themselves, Nintendo has hidden difficult shortcuts for those who are skilled enough to get to them. It's a perfect idea that allows both skillful and beginner players to have fun. The new Super Mario Bros. games have similar ideas, having difficult challenges, but also hidden easier paths. Like a hidden star that lets you run under all the obstacles, or a flying power that lets you glide over all the obstacles. Everything is designed in such a way that the exact same level can be played in completely different ways to allow all players, regardless of the skill level, to have fun. Who would have thought that the biggest mascot of one of the biggest gaming companies of all time actually has good design? I did your majesty, I knew how amazing you were. Nintendo isn't the only genius though, as other companies have also given some good ideas, like the game I've already mentioned, Celeste. Celeste is really hard, which just adds on to that emotional triumph when you finally succeed, which is what I've already gone over. Anyways, the developers behind Celeste wanted to add a mode for lesser skilled players who may need assistance speed in the game. So not an easy mode, but an assist mode. This mode has a ton of different values that you can tweak to make the game much easier. You can slow down the game, give yourself infinite jumps, or make yourself invincible. All of these are toggleable separately from everything else else, so you can have just the right amount of assistance. This system allows players who need help to receive it, but it's clearly been pushed to the side and tucked away so no one uses it thinking it's just an easy mode. It's not just an easy mode because it goes against the intended experience, but it allows you to ruin the experience for yourself if you so choose. The game even comes up with a message from the developers telling you that you could ruin your experience, which was a nice touch. This idea was so great that a similar idea with the exact same name appeared in Mario Odyssey. I told you, they're geniuses. But okay, maybe creative genius design is too hard, and maybe assist mode isn't exactly what you want. How else could you fix this difficulty issue? Well, if you look across gaming, you can find many better options than easy mode. Like Resident Evil 4, the original one, has adaptive difficulty, which basically means that if you die too much, the game gets easier by giving you more health, taking enemy health, or straight up removing enemies. However, it's not a player's choice, but instead a game mechanic the developers can tweak to make sure the difficulty still fits in their vision, and it's genius. I'm not sure the remake has it, but I don't think it does. Another game I can mention is Super Smash Bros, because god forbid I go 20 seconds without mentioning Nintendo. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. Ever since Smash Bros for Wii U and 3DS, they've been using quite an interesting system. Instead of just selecting a difficulty, you can instead bet money, and the more you bet, the harder it is, and thus you get more in return. It's a risk versus reward system tied to its difficulty, which is really cool. Smash does have some good ideas. I mean, technically, Kid Icarus Uprising did it first, but who remembers that game? Me. The point I'm trying to make is that video games are awesome. They're a lot of fun, and a lot of people enjoy playing them. However, many do find it too difficult, and easy modes aren't a good solution. Instead of using easy modes, the difficulty balancing isn't great, and the player has to choose their difficulty, basically arbitrarily. Instead, a designer should handcraft an experience that all players will find fun, and manages to fit them perfectly with all their skill levels. This also opens the path for far more depth, like having hidden routes with easier options just to make the game more interesting. So scrap easy mode, and use pretty much any of the solution I've already mentioned in this video. Ah! Hey, so um, how'd you like the video? This is the first video that I'm filming with this new style with like the green suit and everything. Um, technically, the Mario Sunshine video will be coming up before this, but this is the one that I'm filming first. So, I, I thought it'd be harder than it is. It's not too hard. It's fun. I hope you enjoyed it. So that's why you shouldn't have easy modes. Cool. Can I go now?